we were gonna create our own reality show, if you will. Awesome. Right? And so this is, early, like I said, early 2017, so not that long ago. Um, and, and there are multiple reasons that I decided to do this, but the biggest was that I did not want New Scooters for Less to be the scooter capital of Gainesville, Florida. I wanted New Scooters for Less to be the scooter capital of the world. And I knew, and let me explain what that means first <laughs> before people are like, all right, get out of Gainesville. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I want to put millions of scooters on the road in Gainesville. So I think it'd be great. Um, but I wanted people when they heard the word scooter, I wanted people when they heard that word to think of Gainesville, to think of the University of Florida, and to think of new scooters for less, right? So if somebody in the, is in Portland, Oregon, you know, they hear, you know, they hear new, you know, they hear, they hear the word scooter, they can instantly make that connection. Oh my gosh, have you heard, or have you seen the University of Florida? Have you seen Gainesville? There's this company there called New Scooters for Less that has really just impacted that community. Uh, and so that's, that's what I'm going for when I say I really want, you know, to be the scooter capital of the world. Um, and so I knew that the only way to do that was going to be through video content. Because how else am I going to be, get this message out to everybody? So creating a vlog and putting it on YouTube was, was the answer. And what we did was we just started recording videos. We had a full-time videographer. He would edit a day, or he would film a day, and then he would edit, edit it the next couple days. Film, edit, film, edit. And we just started putting out our show, which is called NS4L. Dot TV, and if you type that into your browser, it'll take you to our YouTube channel, and you can see a lot of this content. But we just uh, started putting out this vlog, and it's funny because a couple of interesting things happened. Um, the The audience wasn't necessarily who I expected. Like our our biggest audience actually, or one of our bigger audiences. I won't say the biggest, but one of our bigger audiences actually was other scooter dealerships. <laughs> and so I became friends with dealerships across the country, um, dealerships across the country who would actually, you know, when some, they knew somebody from their town was going to, you know, Gainesville to go to school, they'd say, hey, check out my buddy Colin, like, check out this guy, like, he knows his stuff. Um, but the biggest thing that happened was we really started exposing our values as a company. Um, this allowed us to build real relationships with people that we had never met before. And of course, me being kind of the host of the show, if you will, I would, I would like look at the camera and be like, hey vlog, Colin here, you know, today this is what's going to be happening or this is what's on the agenda. And we would just go through the day and it's, there's so, so much different content that has been captured through that process. Um, one of the biggest that I can remember in the early days of New Scooters for Less was actually a tweet that got sent out about my company that was negative. And it was negative from a University of Florida football player. And you think about the early days of influencer marketing, terms that you hear a lot, right? Well, for us, athletes at the University of Florida are big time influencers. And if they're tweeting that out to all of their, you know, other college football friends and other athletes. I mean, that's not, that's not a good situation for us. But most importantly, like I just didn't, like that just wasn't who we were. You know, I'm hearing about a problem through, through a tweet. And of course, we'd all like for somebody to just pick up the phone and say, hey, can I speak to a manager? But that doesn't really happen anymore, right? When we get frustrated with something, we go to social media, we, we vent it out, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, Google reviews. Right, and so um, what this what ended up happening was we recorded this in the moments, like all of this was happening, and you saw a team of professionals at a scooter dealership that were genuinely concerned about what happened to this football player and his scooter, and you saw us drop what we were doing and spend virtually the entire day to resolve it and to make it right right so through this content we i mean we basically were exposing our values not only my values as a leader but our values as a company and 
sure enough, like, it's easy to be like, all right, we don't want to like let anybody know that this happened, right? So you could just cut it all, right? And not put it out at all. But we decided, no, like we want to show that, like that we care, like we, this is who we are. Like we're gonna make it right. And so that message going out consistently over time has really built our brand. Um, and there's nothing more important than your brand. Your brand is your reputation, right? Um, so I want to spend a lot of the time like answering your questions, but I thought I would, before I, before I do that, I really want to um, just hit some bullet points. And so I brought these, these bullet points with me today and, and really to focus on you know, how New Scooters for Less has built such a reputable brand. One of our key focuses, we have core values in our organization, and the number one core value is to create and recreate the UCE, <clears throat> what we call the ultimate customer experience, right? And so there's been multiple ways that we've been able to do that, whether it's actually in our dealership. So from a retail standpoint, somebody buys a scooter, we celebrate, we ring a bell, we pull everybody together, we take a picture. Uh, like, we, we want them to feel like it's their birthday. And this is if they choose a celebration, because some now, some people like, they're like, the UCE now, it's funny to see how things have transitioned. For some people, the UCE is getting in and out as quickly as possible, right? Because so many people value their time. And, and that's fine too, and we'll, we'll make that happen. We actually created something called the Hall Ass Pass yeah. within, <laughs> and like at our dealership in the last couple years, um, where people can literally, like the process of buying a scooter is exactly like buying a car. I'm sure most of you have done that at some point. Right, it's very long and a lot of title work, and so we've actually created a process that allows us to do that in advance of them even showing up. So they literally show up. We can spend five minutes, sign here, sign here. Here's your scooter, and you're good to go. So, um, but anyway, we've really focused on building this UCE, this ultimate customer experience. Now, a lot of the ways that I did that through social media was like I said before, using social media as a customer service platform. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people focus on selling, whereas if you like look at it as an opportunity to build those relationships, that's where you really win. Let me get a sip of water, I'm sorry. I was like yelling all day yesterday because it was back to school at New Scooters for Less. Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, we had 200 plus storage scooters get picked up. Oh, jeez. Storage? Yeah, so, not, not to sidetrack too much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as an, as an entrepreneur, you always look out for opportunities. And one of the opportunities that, that came up over time was, you know, we'd be selling to a parent. You know, talking to a parent, they're looking at a the scooter like, this is great, blah, blah, blah. You know. All right, Colin, so if my college student comes home for the summer, you know, what do they do with their scooters? And I'm like, they store them here with us, of course. <laughs> and uh, so over time, that became uh, something that cost $75. And, you know, we do, a, don't get me wrong, it's not as simple. A lot of people are like, oh, I can take a scooter and stick it in a warehouse and, and make all this money. And like, no, there's like, we, we like summarize it. We summarize it like you would a boat. There's a, there is a lot of labor and a lot of work that goes into it. But it has become a strong revenue source for our company. These college students will drop off their scooters to us when they go home for the holidays and they leave them inside. You're away from theft. It's completely prepped and ready. So. But it's funny because it all came up from just <laughs> natural conversation. Like, oh, you just store it here, of course. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? UCE. Yeah. So, so that, that really became, you know, whether it was in the dealership or using social media, um, we focused on creating that customer experience. Now, a good way I'll show you for a customer experience standpoint, this, was my, this is my business card for new scooters for less. Does anybody know what this is? Raise your hand if you know what this is. Okay. Sorry. It's fine if you don't. I'm just I'm just curious. 
So this is Snapchat code. Okay, and if you take a picture of this with Snapchat, which is a social media platform, it will you know, allow you to add me as, as somebody that you're connected with. And um, really started using this <laughs> social media platform. Here. Yeah, I mean, so this is definitely, definitely a college student, definitely a college student app, and actually, and look, like, and we're, and we're gonna, when we, I'm sure once we start diving into this, we start answering your questions. You, you guys, I just want you to realize, yeah, the answer is yes. So we're gonna let's. Uh, I'm excited to get into y'all's questions. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll try to speed through through some of this. But like, I really started using this social media platform, Snapchat, which is for college students right now. I want you to remember, I want you to remember that Facebook was for college students. Parents for young children. Yep. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> I, what I would do is, every when we sold a scooter, I would go up and say, hey, Thank you so much for the business. This is my card. This goes directly to me. If you ever have a question about anything, I want you to feel free to reach out to me. I started this company 16 years ago. You know, I want to make sure that, that you're safe on the scooter. And I would just give them a little spiel, right? Well, what would happen is, guess what, guys? We sell 800 scooters in a year. If, if a young lady, 20 years old, breaks down on the scooter at 10 o'clock at night, what does she do? Right? She sends me a snap. Hey, Colin, I'm so sorry. She takes a 10 second video. My scooter's making this funny sound. <laughs> like, can, you know, she's using her phone. Can you help? And if I get the message, which most of them I do because I am very active on social media, I help her, right? And talk about a competitive advantage. I mean, and talk about giving comfort to the parent who lives in Kansas who can't be there to go pick up their daughter on the side of the road. Right, and so we were able to like effectively work through that situation and help even in off hours when we're not open. Um, and and not only that, but to answer questions: when's my next oil change? When's it just being available and being accessible allowed us to really build those relationships? Um, another thing that I would say, and this is something that I think would be really great for you guys. This is something that I've used a lot over my career. This device. Okay, like talk about <laughs> that too. Talk about talk about the talk about video messaging, guys. I don't, you know, it's funny. I have a friend of mine, and his name is Raphael. He just started a, a not a, any relation to the turtles right now. <laughs> he started a car business, and and I love what he does because he's like he won't communicate with me through text, at least not very often. He'll he'll text me video and I love it. Like he'll just take a video. Hey, Colin, man, I just want to let you know that I was thinking about you, bro. You like mean the world, you know, just like he just has, he builds that human connection and I get to see his expression. He's just a, a really good friend of mine. Um, but he makes it a point to send messages through video. And, and I do this a lot. I do this a lot through at, at, through thank yous, like social media thank yous. When somebody buys a scooter from us, I'll send them a message. You know, hey, Han, I just wanted to say thank you so much for buying that scooter the other day. Uh, you know, it means the world to us that you're one of our customers. Welcome to our family. And, you know, just if you, if you ever need anything, just let us know. But sending that 30 second video goes such a long way and it's not utilized enough. Whether you do it through text, through social media, I did it through Twitter a lot, um, and, or through just DM on your favorite social media platform. Um, and I'll say this, like, in a very competitive landscape, I always encourage people to see what everybody else is doing and to go and do the complete opposite. <laughs> um, you know, it's like one of my biggest pieces of advice, because I think we have a tendency, whether you're like thinking about starting a restaurant or whatever the case might be, it's easy to go look and see what everybody else is doing. And the things that we really strive for at our dealership is to, is to look at what other places are doing and do something completely different. I mean, a good example is like, I have, I have this huge prize wall. When you walk into our service department, you walk into our service department and there's like prize wall as if you just entered an arcade and people really aren't sure what's going on. <laughs> but when you buy service from us, you get tickets back 
and those tickets can be used towards prizes or they can be used towards future service. But it's our version of a punch card because I looked, I'm like, all right, what does everybody else do? Everybody else does a punch card. Buy nine oil changes, get the 10th for free. Everybody does that. Buy nine coffees, get the 10th for free. It's like, okay, how can I create my own version of this? And that was the answer. Um, and then don't be too big for your britches. This is advice that my mom gave to me. I, okay, don't be too big for your britches. And what that means is like, I see so many businesses, you know, they start off, you know, you think about your first day, like you're just really, really excited. You know, you're working much harder. You're, you're just doing those over the top things. And then time goes on, you get more clients you get busy and those things stop right and i actually knew like a business who told me yeah you know in the early days we would you know deliver a pie to every new client and i'm like that's awesome so why'd you stop oh we just got too busy couldn't keep up with it anymore i'm like okay but what if you could like even if you have more clients what if you created a process or something to be able to do that Right. I left New Scooters for Less at 1030 last night and oh well, maybe it wasn't that late. Actually I got home kinda early. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it was more like nine, I think. Um it was ten thirty on Friday night. Anyway. <laughs> that's but that's those are the squirrel moments you'll get from me. Um you'll fit in just fine. <laughs> I know. Exactly. That's, I had I had a feeling. Um, but as I was leaving, you know, I still had team members that were still there and uh, they're at the sales counter and they're handwriting thank you cards to every scooter sale from that day. You know, and I'm like that's such a lost art and, you know, it still means so much and I, maybe it's not a thank you card. Maybe, you know, maybe you have your own version, but we still we still do thank you cards. We still you know, do those things that, that we've done, that I've done since the start and have made it such a priority to keep those things going. Um, now, I'll touch on these words that you're hearing all the time really quick called personal brand <laughs> and personal branding. Um, personal branding, this is something that I get asked about all the time and I constantly just go to three things to when it comes to personal brand and I, I tell people okay why like why do you want to build your personal brand okay I think it's vital for what you guys do um, if you're not separating yourself distinguishing yourself from everybody else then I think you just get drowned out so I think as a realtor it's vital that you do have a personal brand and you just need to think about what you know why you want a personal brand, which I would assume is you need to sell homes, real estate. You do commercial, or is it all residential in here? Uh, mainly or, residential. Mainly residential. Yeah. You need to, need to sell properties, right? Um, but I always, you know, I challenged the last group that I spoke to to really, to really get deeper as to their why, because I think that's such an easy escape. For me, it's like, all right, well, you know, why do I sell scooters to help kids get to and from class? Right? That's like not why we sell scooters. I mean, it's our mission and we tell, you know, we say this is what we're, this is what we show up to do, but our mission and our why is much greater than that, right? Like this is an opportunity for us to build our community and to really invest into other people. And so I always tell real estate groups specifically, like, are you selling a house or are you introducing somebody to our community for the very first time? And those are two completely different things. And so I would just really say focus and zero in on what's your why, like why are you doing this? All right, the second is what, All right? Like what defines you? When people think of me and like when I think of myself, I think of myself as an entrepreneur, I think of myself as a podcaster. I have a podcast, by the way. <laughs> uh, I think of myself as a, as a husband, as a father, you know, as a scooter pro. Like, these are literally things that get lined out. In fact, on my other business card, 
like they're li they're laid out right there digital marketer scooter pro podcaster speaker like these are the things that really define who i am and allows me to think about the kind of content that i want to create in order to show and share who i am to show what makes me unique right so what what defines you and then three how like how are you going to distribute this information okay a lot of people think oh it's got to be on video you know you got to do a podcast and that's not true like you got to be very self-aware of who you are and what you like and I, some of the best personal brands are people who have written books there are people who blog they write all the time in fact like i was you know thinking about you know okay i was thinking about content for you know realtors <laughs> who, are, who are moms because i find that that's kind of a defining thing is like a lot of realtors who are moms love to create content that involve their families and that kind of, which I think is, which I think is fantastic. And so I was like, all right, if, if that were me, what's one thing that I would do? And I'm thinking like writing an article, you know, if you wrote an article around how to adjust your kids to a new community, right? Like that would perform, or if it's good, <laughs> I think that I think that would do really well on platforms like LinkedIn, on Facebook, and because it's super interesting stuff. And then maybe you even submit it to a local magazine. You know, like there's there's so many different ways to do this, guys. Um, but that's just an example. And then I just wrote down current opportunities. You guys, I think the biggest opportunity that's being missed right now, especially in this particular, you know, industry is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is just, it's just really, really big right now. It has what I call the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Raise your hand if you know what the six degrees of Kevin Bacon are. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you don't get this kind of exposure with any other social media platform. You end up, you know, if, if I make a post and I'm connected with Chad, right? And like, you might not necessarily be connected to me, but if he likes my stuff or if he comments on my stuff, then you have a good opportunity of seeing it. And LinkedIn is allowing this. You will see the little seconds in the corner, the little, the little three, one, two or three. That's the connection that it is to you. Okay. And so that organic exposure is just huge and i've had i've had posts in the last two months uh, that have had 130,000 views i had one get 250,000 views and that's all you know we all want free exposure we don't want to pay for ads or anything like that's it and i'm not saying that you're gonna get like, out of all of the posts that i've made i've had two really like shoot off and get that many views but i would say consistently consistently i'm getting anywhere between 300 and 1500 <laughs> views per post and that's a lot in today's organic social media and you can use hashtags you can use hashtags like you know for gainesville or for real estate um you know it's it's just a that's that's the opportunity to get organic reach and i would just suggest posting content like i said if it's articles related around what you enjoy um you know video content whatever it is like do you but definitely use linkedin clean up your profiles the one thing that i tell everybody when it comes to linkedin <clears throat> and i actually just told a client to change this on their linkedin so they had their name and they had cmo chief marketing officer but they didn't have chief marketing officer of business right and that's because on linkedin if you like go look you'll see the name and then you'll see like the grade little title there mm -hmm. right you want to be you want it to say who it is you are what you do and who you work for um in order in order to effectively use it some people don't use that and it doesn't do them any benefit they don't get they don't get that brand awareness if you will um so 
those are like some, <laughs> I feel like it's like a bunch of random bullet points, but really, <laughs> but really I want it to, I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted you to think about how you were going to do the thing that's the most important and that's build relationships in order to achieve your objectives, right? And the, the most important is, you know, the most important form of marketing is word of mouth marketing. There's nothing more than that. And so the things like using these social media platforms, doing all these types of things, do nothing but fuel that fire. And you just want to keep adding logs to that fire. So just think of using social media as a way to do that. And so now I'd like to spend some time answering any questions that you guys have when it comes to social media, uh, content creation, et cetera. Yes. So with YouTube, so you had said that you that most of the things that you post on YouTube, um, most of the people who are viewing them are actually people in the industry. How much of a of a future customer reach do you get from? So, YouTube? what makes YouTube so fantastic is the is actually the SEO behind of it behind it. SEO search engine optimization. So these are things that we always focus on when it comes to websites. When somebody build a website, oh, we gotta focus on the SEO, focus on the SEO. Keywords, people used to do tricky things like hiding words in white on their Google. <laughs> you know, if they had a white background, they like hide words in white keywords in order to try to like boost their Google ranking. And then Google found that out and Google started penalizing that. And so like that, but that's what we mean. Like we want that organic search. So when somebody goes and they type Gainesville scooters, I want to pop up number one. Not paid number one, I just want to pop up number one. So, so when they do a Google, a, just a random Google search, the YouTube will come up. So if the video content is optimized really well, and what I mean by optimized mm -hmm. is good description, good title, good keywords, like when you upload a video in the bottom, they have the little key tags, mm -hmm. good keywords. Um, captioning, there's a lot of things that go into optimizing and I'm happy to share, <laughs> like I have like a summary sheet. That'd be great, yeah. Happy to share it with you. Um, but you think of it like this, Here, here's an example, this is the best way I can describe, is somebody could go to you, could go to Google, somebody could go to Google right now and they could type, how to strap a scooter in the back of a truck. Okay, mm. that information is not on my website. Right, but if they Google search that, a video pops up number one, that video is my video. And that video then becomes the lead generator mm -hmm. to new scooters for less. But, and it's because of the way that you optimize your search engine. You don't pay for that, correct? I did not, no, we like, now, the better optimized what happens is the more views it's gonna get. Right. And when it comes to view, like that helps when it kind of, that helps in boosting your YouTube search. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, because YouTube is just another search engine, but because Google owns YouTube, when you search in Google, content, YouTube content will come up in Google. I guess I just think of it yeah. as two separate things because you, because when I'm going to YouTube, I go to YouTube. Right. When I'm going to, you know, Right, but if you were searching your favorite recipe or something, it might pop up on so, Google yeah, as a YouTube as video. Yeah. And, so, and so that's the opportunity is when that content's optimized and people search something, they can, they can find your YouTube video. And then in the description, you know, if you look at the, the YouTube description um, on our video content, you're gonna see links to our social media, links to our website, links to like emails, you know, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff in order to get them from that video to our business. And then if you don't mind, I, I'll talk to you offline about podcasting. So just, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to talk for, podcasting. For, for all those squirrels out there. <laughs> well, you know what's really interesting is my, my stepdad, so my parents have come down to Florida for a couple of months. Um, we'll see how this goes. We'll see them on the weekend. Hey, I know a good real estate agent. Thank you. <laughs> good one. So my stepdad is constantly on YouTube, and it didn't dawn on me until just now. And I'm talking like the past three or four years. Like he's retired, so now he's doing a bunch of stuff. And all he does is, mom's like, oh yeah, Merle was Googling today. And like, it's Googling and found out how to do this, and Googling how to find it. 
So, you know, it's, it's interesting because people say, do you realize the age of this room? Well, do you realize the age of this room? Everybody is using social media one way or another, whether it be Facebook, Snapchat, yeah, maybe that's the younger generation for now. But Facebook was the younger generation for the longest time. Now you talk to a young person and they're like, Facebook is stupid. Only old people use that. Well, now I'm old, so whatever. I yeah. I mean, it's true. Guys, I, I tell everybody all the time, so New Scooters for Less was founded in March of 2004. Facebook was founded in February of 2004. So I was still a college student in that semester, and you used to have to be a college student to even have access to Facebook. So I had... Uh, ufl.edu email address to have access to Facebook. And I quickly realized through through Facebook, especially as that Facebook started to get into like pages for businesses and stuff, I was like, this is gonna this is gonna be it. Like this is gonna be how people build business. And that's why we decided to really focus on making it such a priority and an opportunity to build those relationships. But who had MySpace too? Yeah. MySpace. Friends with Tom. Yeah. Friends with Tom? Friends with Tom. I always, I always joke because my, uh, my MySpace name was uh, Calling All the Girls. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, wasn't, wasn't good with my, girl, my girlfriend at the time. My girlfriend who became my wife, she didn't, she didn't like that one. <laughs> so how many of you are absolutely afraid of social media or do not use it? Well, that's pr how many of you are like lying right now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, does it, what questions do you guys have about it? Now is like the perfect time because he's a digital king, people, like digital king. Yes. I'll come back. I never really got into um, LinkedIn because I don't understand it. Is it, and I know it's evolved over the last several years. Is it, is it like business Facebook? Uh, very similar. Okay. Yeah. Is it, is it appropriate to just put business stuff on there? Because now the thing is, you know, I've got a Facebook business page and a personal page, and they say to kind of mix it up, 80, 20, you know. So I would agree with that. Um, it's LinkedIn is definitely a business audience, and I think whether – what you're posting on any social media platform, you should always consider the audience. You don't want to do these auto blasts to everything, you know, putting the same content on everything, unless you feel like the content's going to be relevant to all of those particular audiences. Um, LinkedIn has definitely been a, a business platform. Like that's where we are, that's where executives are, like that you want to steer your content towards that audience. Um, but I, st I think there's a lot of content that is uh, appropriate for all platforms and and I definitely agree like it's funny I, I always tell people hey when it comes to LinkedIn yeah definitely focus on a business audience but then they're like man I saw you post your TikTok to your LinkedIn the other day <laughs> and I'm like yeah because I'm always experimenting I'm always like trying to see what is engaging people's interests and so I think I think you 100% should not yes you create content for LinkedIn for a business audience but still post you know, the picture of you and your family at the park from last weekend and, and talk about how that time was, you know, whatever. Like maybe you were just grateful for that time or just the, I try to like use those as opportunities to still relate it to business, right? So I'll say, man, to be able to break away from business and to be able to like clear my mind is, you know, such a great thing that we all need to spend more time doing or whatever it might so be. Would you agree maybe 80% business, 20% personal on LinkedIn and then just to reverse on Facebook? Not, so, not necessarily. So I would say, so I, I would say for LinkedIn, it's business. Um, with that little personal tie-in like, to, to, to an article or okay. something that is going to still be a business question. Okay. I, so it's not, because people will completely block you or like get brutal on LinkedIn. They're like, no personal crap here. Um, and so, like, I, I have, you know, curmudgeonly people on my list, <laughs> clearly, but I have people who say, you know, nobody wants to see how you lost 10 pounds in five days. Um, <laughs> so you have to be, so you have to be very careful with that. You can take Mars, um, you know, you could take an article from Mars and put it on there with a little personal note or whatever. And that would go a long way. I mean, I, for example. 
So I would try, like if I was gonna post something about weight loss or whatever it is, I'm gonna try, me personally would try to connect it to what I do in my career, right? Like why, why was losing that five pounds so important to like your daily lifestyle, your health, you know, as an entrepreneur, or as a business person? Is that that computer? Yeah. Is that me? Might be. <laughs> um, she, does, she does YouTube for real estate agents, and I took her course, so I, I do real estate YouTubes. But, I mean, how to find an inspector? I mean, would I put that on YouTube, or, I mean, is that? You could. I mean, on LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, share con we share content from our YouTube to LinkedIn all the time. Now, I think... Yeah, it's so hard like I don't really like to dive into algorithmic stuff too much because it changes all the times all the time but most platforms want you to stay on their platform so they only penalize you if it takes you away from like if you're on LinkedIn and you're and you have to click to go to YouTube they typically don't like that so if it's the if the video is under 10 minutes and you can keep it and you can upload it directly to linkedin you can just show the video in linkedin as well not only is it going to autoplay because if you show from youtube it's just going to show a thumbnail right but if you upload it the video directly to linkedin then as people are going through their feed it's going to actually start auto playing the video and they'll see it and it's native that's what we say is native to linkedin now you've got it in two places as opposed to one with a link. Correct. Yep. Yes. All right. So I did do all the work. <coughs> and I see the vision for Instagram. I don't know how you can build a brand and still make money out of it. Bring revenue, literally making a brand. Because, I mean, Instagram, you show your lifestyle and you can create a thing, like a shirt, whatever. You can sell it. You can make, like, I see the vision. Uh... What I struggle with is on LinkedIn, it's not the same vision, it's not the same goal, or is it? And what I mean by it is, on LinkedIn, what do you, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see, because it, it's a different, I don't get what's the goal, what do you try to bring, it's just a company thing? Like that you try to make on LinkedIn, or is, it has a lifestyle to it. I don't think I understand completely so what you're so asking, when but he says lifestyle. I'm sure he means kind of brand. I don't. Do you mean brand? Yeah, like. Do you mean brand when you say lifestyle? There or? is. Is there revenue to be brought from LinkedIn? Colin, I think that maybe he might be. I think he might be talking about the different niche that you're trying to target. Because each social media platform mm -hmm. targets a certain audience. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I think that that's maybe what he could be talking about. Because like he, with Colin, he's targeting a lot of the the college students, the ones that would. I mean, not saying that I would buy a scooter, but when I bought a, when I bought a scooter, I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> that's included in it. That's included in the question. Like how you can sell stuff on Instagram, you can become no, an influencer. That, yeah, what I'm saying is, Instagram is what I can bring to myself. I, you guys, well, I think, again, I think this goes back, back to like why you're using social media. Like if you're using it to build relationships, like man, some of the best relationships to be made are with other business professionals, right? Like if, if you can use it that way, actually connect with other business professionals and build those relationships well that could be the next lead word of mouth generator you build you build a relationship with another business owner here, here in town then that could be an, another great you know relationship that leads to more word of mouth referrals for you and that's that's what I so it was more like looking for the relationships not so much for the customer <laughs> right. the relationships bring I get customers it, but I'm saying like your primary Whoa, not necessarily so, so let me give you, I'll give you like a YouTube example, but it's, it could happen on LinkedIn. It doesn't really matter. Right. So when we created, when we started creating the vlog for new scooters for less, we started creating, we were putting out this content all the time. So like I said, we had the, the bad, the bad tweet that went out. Like it, it could have been anything. The busy days at the shop where we sold 42 scooters in one day that got recorded. We had this accumulation of content, right? And 
this kind of goes back to what you were asking earlier. Like we had, we had a mom down in Miami who, you know, started, they were, they started doing their searches on Google and so forth for their college student who was going to the University of Florida that fall. Student just got accepted in February. So that's how, you know, they start planning, all right, college kids going to, going to Gainesville, what do we need? They get into the Facebook, they get into Facebook groups, private groups, parent groups. All right, we're moving to Gainesville. Like, what, what should we be considering? What are we looking for? And scooter gets brought up, right? So this does a search, Gainesville scooters. Our content comes up, our video content comes up, website, everything related to social media platforms, website, etc. right? Well, this mom starts watching our videos. And then when she came, and this is when I realized that we were really onto something, was when she came in and she goes, hey, I just want to speak to the owner on the busiest day. You're automatically, as the owner, thinking, gosh, what went wrong? <laughs> what, what fire do I have to put out today? Um, but I went in there and, and she was like, hey, Colin, like, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, you don't know me, but like, you know, I'm from Miami. My student just moved here to the University of Florida. We're getting them settled in. And I came across your videos several months ago. We watched, we did a marathon of your vlog and we just wanted to let you know that we're buying a scooter from you today because of, because of that, those videos. We realized that you were the kind of business owner we want to buy from. And it's so difficult because I don't really know how to answer this question and I get asked this question all the time and I'll probably figure out an answer at some point, but everybody's like, what is the ROI of your vlog? I can't, I can't measure, or at least I haven't figured out a, an effective way to really measure how many scooters I've sold because of that video or those, the accumulation of those videos, right? <laughs> like I, like I, <laughs> Like that was, I know it works because that one mom made it a point to tell me, right? But how many other moms or how many other dads have seen that content and made the decision to purchase from us? And so I always tell people like the ROI of one piece of content is zero or not very much. <laughs> like a lot of people get, they get frustrated because they start doing Instagram for, you know, like, oh, I, I know that I need Instagram because everybody has Instagram. They start doing it and they do it for a few months and they see no results and they stop, right? And it's not that the ROI of one tweet, one post, one, like, it's zero, but the accumulation of that content over time builds your brand and that brand leads to more word of mouth and more relationships and that leads to more sales. So if I can jump in on that. so. Goals. So we talked about your goals, right? And we talked about what your financial goals were. How many people do you need to contact in a year that says, I'm considering something in real estate? Who wants to share? Do you know that number? How many is it? Is it what? Mine's around like 321. Or around 321. If you don't know that number, you need to know that number, OK? Because it directly correlates to what he's talking about. You, you put content out there and you're like, oh, I put a video out there and nothing happened, right? And it's like, oh, great. Well, nothing's happening. Well, out of the 300 and some that you've got to uh, touch base with Tyler, how many are actually going to do something? That would be like 10 to 20. And that's after a right? lot of posting. You know, they're not going to just do it every time you say jump. And that's the main reason why I wanted him here. And I'm hoping that you get that correlation. The amount of people that you need to contact and the content that you put out there every day, you're going to get nothing from. <laughs> A majority of it, you're going to get nothing from. So when somebody tells you no, or when somebody's like, not right now, or a deal falls through, guess what? That's statistics. We all hate it in school, except for the creepy, weird people that like statistics. Hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> Right? So that's what this content is. And I think my takeaway from this is you put content out there. You put all content out there. And you try to show who you are through that content. Of course. And you try to make it somewhat relevant. Because how many times do you not care about something until you care about it? Right. And then what do you do? You go and you find that content. Right? Yeah. Question? What's interesting is with the social media stuff, uh, with the LinkedIn in particular, I closed my photography business 10 years ago. 
I am still getting people contacting me about photography. Ten years later. Yep. There was a question in the back that was waiting for a while, so I just want to... Yes. Okay, so I have a hard time balancing okay. my Facebook personal page with my business page because I feel like, I guess my Facebook page has been established and I've been on there forever. And right. I just, is there a balance? Is there, should I only have one? Should I have both? Should I have... <laughs> um, that's a good question. And if... I would reverse engineer as from your goals. Um, for me, I have a Colin Austin entrepreneur page where I post a lot of my content. I share a lot of content from my podcast and that's that I really want that to be a place that people find when they are looking for me as a speaker or, you know, these, these things that uh, they're not on that, they're on this, uh, these things that really define my brand and, and the things that I'm trying to accomplish in my career. Um, I want it to be, I want it to be a place where they can get that information or they can connect with me. I very often like use my personal website, for example, colinaustin.com as a place to get people there so that they can connect with me on the social media platform that they prefer to connect with. And that Facebook messenger through that Facebook business page, you know, that, what do they call it? Per, I mean, it's not a personal, I, it's a business page for myself, right? Oh, is it, is it an entrepreneur page? <laughs> um, so the reason I have it is because of the things that I want to accomplish long term. It might not be necessary for you because as a realtor, you're, you are so focused on those one-to-one -one personal relationships. So you are going to become friends with your clients, right? And, and I think that's great. I would absolutely be connecting with, and I actually connect, it's funny now, in the early days of Facebook, you would never connect with any, <laughs> any random person, right. right? And now it's like, oh, I got 50 mutual friends with this person, of course I'm connecting with them. <laughs> <laughs> like we obvi we're obviously friends, even though we've never met a day in our life. So, so don't think that way, yeah, <laughs> and, that, and, and that's fine. And like, and everybody's, gonna, and everybody's going to be different, but I think uh, like over time, that's definitely become a little bit lighter. And, and I think, and for me specifically, it's because that even that goes back to my long-term objectives. It's like, I, I want to be the most well-connected person in Gainesville, uh, really because of the things that I'm trying to do for this community our podcast like I want to know everybody and I want I believe that if I help them if I help them up and help you guys be a little bit better today that you're going to be able to invest more into our community and really help us build this community so for me I want to be connected to everybody but that might not be you um, so the answer to your question is that it really depends on you and your goals yeah, yeah I mean if I'm a realtor guys like that's funny I always this is, I probably need to do this a lot more, but I just, I, I put myself in your shoes, right? I'm like, all right, what would I do? What are the things that I would do? Um, I would definitely be connecting with everybody, all of my customers. My customers should, <coughs> my clients should become my friends, yeah, right? Do, like, so, some of them will not accept their request, which I understand. Um, and some of them will, and they can instantly, I feel, a bond. Right. It's like they see my kids, they see what I do, they see how, what I care about. I get to see their family. We have something to talk about. Right. And the best things that you could be doing is investing into their lives. So when they're talking about their kid, they post a picture, you know, and you're commenting on it, and you're really taking the time to invest further into those relationships. Um, so I would definitely be connecting with everybody on, and maybe, you know, if you're sending that friend request on day one. Right? Maybe that's not the time to do it. Right. Maybe you need to like really spend the time investing and providing some value into that relationship, and then three months down the road, six months down the road, then send that, then send that request. Right? So. I wish I get pre-qualified first. 
first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's a great example. I mean, that's, it. that's exactly what you got to do. You know, you got to. They may not be pre-qualified now, but they could be done. You know, and another thing real quick on that, like, a, a completely different example, but I see this happen all the time with realtors is like, you know, you sell a house and you give like a, like a thank you basket or some sort of follow up, which I think is, which I think is great. But that kind of goes back to my thing of like, everybody does this. How can you be different? Man, as I was thinking about coming in here, I'm like, okay, if I was a realtor, what would I do? What would Colin Austin do? I'm thinking, you know, in those first meetings, you know, or we're driving in the car, we're going to go see this house or whatever it is. I'm just, I'm picking their brain, right? I'm asking questions. I'm learning as much about them as possible. Where are you, where, where are you from? Where, <laughs> where did you, where did you, uh, you know, you know, all you guys are married. Where did, where did you go on your honeymoon? You know, where was your first trip? Whatever. I'm thinking about, okay, this, this couple just told me that they moved to Gainesville, but they went on this trip to Hawaii that meant so much to them. They went snorkeling. And I, you know, I'm just, I would just be soaking in this information. And then not a year, like maybe, well, anytime, anytime after, maybe it could be one year. Maybe it's just some random thing. Maybe it's on their anniversary. You get the, that information, but a, a moment that's special to them. And I'm like, dude, I would send a gift basket, but it would have like snorkeling gear in it. <laughs> you know, it would have that, it would have that, and I'd have a personal note in there that's like, hey, I'm so honored that, you know, I, I was just thinking about you guys because I remember that you said your anniversary date was, was this day. And, you know, it's, I can't believe it's already been a year and a half since I the house to you guys, or since we found that right home for you. <laughs> and I'm so honored that I was part of that process. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate you. And I, I hope that you'll carve out the time to remember those, the moments before the home, you know, or, or something like that. I'm a scooter from you, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like those, those lit, dude, like it's so easy. And, and I, and I love systems and I love processes and I love like, they're so vital, but it's so easy to default to things that it, they become not personal anymore. Mm -hmm. And in social media, unfortunately, contributes to that. And as much as I love social media, I see it all the time. It's like, it's default. Oh man, like I just, I just need to sell another house. So let me just promote this. Let me throw up my MLS video of this house and like promote the hell out of it and get it in front of as many eyeballs as possible. And that's fine for short term stuff. Long term, it's, it's not gonna win. Like you have to invest into those relationships and, and it's an opportunity to do so. So, yes. Um, so, with all of your social media platforms that you use, aside from your blog or blogging, blog page, do you yourself alone handle all of those posts on a daily basis? And if so, because it's overwhelming, do you use any, any connectors like Hootsuite or something like that? And last question, because I want to talk. Tell you all my <laughs> the last question is um, on a daily basis because there's like just there five that you're showing us. Like, what is your typical touches and how often for each of your for each of the different you know platforms? Does that make sense? Yeah, I might have to come back to that third question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be on, like I I don't try to overanalyze myself. How much, like I'm not like. I got to put out five posts today. Like I, I don't, I really, I really go with the flow. Um, and my process, my process evolves. Like I think everybody's process evolves. Like I have blocks in my calendar where I sit down and like, I will take the time to put out a piece of content, but if something comes up and I can't do it, then it's not the end of the world. Like I still have that block there tomorrow. Right. Um, now a lot of stuff just happens in between. Like I tell people all the time, like, all right, I might like leave this meeting today. I might feel like really energized from this. It's been a lot of fun, right? I might go sit in my car and before I go to my next thing, like make a post, right? Put up, put out, put up a piece of content about it. Um, and so a lot of it just happens on the fly. I really don't overthink any of it. 
Um, in terms of scheduling stuff, now if you see a piece of content that goes out and sometimes if there's like really long copy like i will put out some really well thought out content it's not like oh i was like look at my pizza that i had today um <laughs> you know like it will be more thought provoking stuff a lot of that i have um you know thought out and created copy around it and scheduled it out, which I think was your question, right? In the platform, the platform that we're using right now is called eClincher, e-clincher. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, so I'll just be honest with you, but I'll tell you, and this, this, is, this came up last, in the last group that I spoke to, you know, schedulers are shortcuts. And anytime you're using a shortcut, <laughs> they're not gonna be great. Um, I think various schedulers, you know, one of them will do LinkedIn really well. One of them will do, <laughs> they'll do different platforms really well. Uh, I wish one scheduler would kind of get it all right. But, you know, a good example that I always use is like captioning is, captioning is vital in 2020. Because none of us like listen to video content anymore. Like if you're on Facebook, you like, it comes across your feed. And if it's, if you're, if you aren't able to read what that person's saying, you keep scrolling. So 85% of video is on Facebook is watched in complete silence. And so none of these, none of the schedule, these schedulers haven't really quite figured out how to like upload the caption file to where you could schedule the video out and have the captions like, you know, uploaded to the video content. Um, so for that reason, like I don't, I don't use a lot of them. Um, if it's, if it's video related, then we're usually uploading it and, and scheduling it out through Facebook, you know? Um, or, you know, Josh and our other videographers, they'll actually take the time to, you guys have probably seen, I mean, if you go look at some of my Instagram content, I'm at Colin Austin, um, you'll see these little video <laughs> clips where he's actually put the words physically on the video. Um, and you're starting, now I'm starting to see more apps come out that allow that. Um, these, this subtitling and stuff, but that's critical today because nobody listens to video anymore. So um, schedulers or shortcuts, I try to use any scheduler within the platform themselves. So Facebook and Instagram now have the ability to schedule out. Um, and so I would recommend that, but I really don't have a preference when it comes to whether it's Hootsuite, you know, eClincher or any of the others. And then there was a th Third piece of the question? Yeah, like on a daily basis. Just my, my process? Well, not your process, but you know, hi, this is, this is Colin, having a great time here at Watson Realty in Tioga. Yeah. <laughs> right, you give us a tweet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, like how often do we should, you? We should just do one real quick. <laughs> oh, so yeah, let's do that. <laughs> this will be on Instagram for anybody who wants to see it. Hey guys, what's up? It's 10 o'clock in the morning and we are doing a nice little talk here with Watson Group over in Tioga. These guys have a ton of energy. We're having so much fun answering so many questions on social media. We're going to be here for the next six hours. Come and see us. There you go. <laughs> Do you guys have a tag? For the, <laughs> for the group? <laughs> is it? Yeah, Watson Tioga. Is it on the lo <laughs> Oh, there's a lo there's a locate there's a location tag, so there you go. <laughs> oh, that's hard. I'll, I'll hit the location tag. Yeah. Now you also know why he's here for me too. <laughs> um But yeah, it's that. Like th throughout the day. Throughout the day, in between things, um, sometimes if I if I'm in a business meeting even, and somebody has that energetic vibe or they're really into like, we'll do it together. Um, any any type of more than any other. And do you talk I do I use Instagram Instagram more? You know, do you, or do you talk about what, like which one do you use more than any? Um, I definitely lean towards. This, this is going to change. <laughs> so for the video content, this changes all the time. I, I definitely spend more time on Instagram than any other platform. Um, LinkedIn right now is probably my second. And 
Facebook's slowly becoming my last. I hate to admit that because I've built, I've done, I've just done so much on Facebook over the years. Um, TikTok is becoming a favorite rapidly. Um, I, I always joke like I don't even like Josh. Josh has had videos that get half a million views on TikTok. What was it? Do you know? Yeah, half a million. It's a half million. So he's created content that has reached, you know, a, a video that has reached half a million. You had another one that did 50,000, 100,000. I mean, the organic reach there is, is crazy. Um, it's, it's super entertaining, but like, oh, TikTok's for kids. Like, literally go download it. You'll get so hooked. You'll, like, you'll be laying in bed, and you won't be able to get these little 10-second loops of songs out of your head. Um, but... But it's it's organic, and I just want people like it, it is a lot of fun, and that's and you definitely need, and that's a big piece, guys. Like if you do not enjoy it, then you have then it's not going to work, right? I always tell people all the time, like if you don't enjoy social media, then it's not for you, or maybe you need to outsource it because like you can't let it become a to do item, right? It's like oh, I got to check this off the list because Colin told me so. Like it, that's not going to contribute to goals to your social media strategy. Um, so it's better for you to outsource it or to find somebody who can be passionate about it um, in order to effectively build your brand. Was there a question over here? Yes. If you were starting from scratch, where would you start? Um, if I was starting from scratch as a realtor right now, I would build my LinkedIn profile first. And I would like focus 90% of my time there. <laughs> I mean, you could establish a Facebook page too, but I just think LinkedIn, from an organic standpoint, you could have never made a post before. Like you're gonna get, you're gonna get some reach, um, and if you you know start following content that you like and start engaging on that content, that's great. Like you find everybody in the room, you connect with them, right? You see what they're posting up, you start commenting on it. Well, the people that they're connected to are going to see that you commented on their post, even though they've never seen you before. And that's free, that's free exposure, free reach. Um, and so if you just get in there, and, and, and that's, that's a key piece to this, not only, not only putting out content, but like engaging in conversations on other people's content. Or when somebody like comments on your piece of content, actually responding back. Yeah. Like yeah. people, like if you go look at New Scooters Plus's YouTube channel, like when somebody asks a question or when somebody like says, "Hey, thank you so much for putting this video out," we say, "Oh, we're so glad that it helped you." Like we actually respond, respond right. and yes, and engage in the conversation because we're trying to build those relationships. So many people put out content and then just leave it because they think that, that they just want the brand awareness or the exposure. And they just, did, but if you actually get in there and engage, that's the opportunity to build the relationship. Some just dawned on me. So does this, does the same thing apply? And I know it's a stupid question, but um, does the same thing apply for SEO with um, how you set up your LinkedIn profile? Like, do you need to worry about buzzwords and things like that for um, as much? I mean, I think it's good that, you know, Your, yeah, yeah, like, like more of just having a nice, clean profile that describes mm -hmm. what it is, like who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it, it's important. Um, mainly, like, because if you like go and Google search Colin Austin, I'm sure my LinkedIn profile pops up, mm -hmm. right? So, like, that's, and if somebody searches for me, I want them to find relevant information, but I'm not in there like focusing on. You know this keyword Maybe over that keyword. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's more of just making it, making sure it's real to, to to who I am and that it's filled out. You know, I don't want to just have Colin Austin, CEO, on there and not have any other relevant information as to who I am and what I do. Yeah, it comes up third. Or third? Yeah, third. LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully, what's the first thing? ColinAustin.com. All right, good. <laughs> yes. He's like, I'm paying the right people. <laughs> because for a moment I thought, you know, you're selling scooters, so we're selling skills. And I have a feeling that we may be overanalyzing because it goes back to basic services. Like if I want to buy a scooter, I would Google, I would Google you. Mm -hmm. Calling person. 
And if you were popping out first and said that you, your scooters are for us, <coughs> I would call you. And I would only concentrate on, on two or three old uh, men. If you start selling for, for less, that would be most, that, that would be bottom line. That I would call you and I would talk to you. All the rest is just, you know, wasting time. I mean, I know you have to keep up with it, but bottom line is your product. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's a little bit complicated because it's... Mm, you're making it sound way easy what I've done over 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... And don't get me wrong, new scooters for less, like that name does not mean that we're the cheapest. That means that we provide the most value at the price. Yeah. So com those are two completely. It's kind of misleading because when you say less, <laughs> I'm it's okay, his price must be good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're very, we're very uh, clear that we are going to give you the most amount of value in the price so for example like you could find a scooter for 9.99 somewhere and you know a similar one might be 10.99 or 11.99 at our dealership but at 11.99 well when you come back to our dealership it's going to be uh, you know our labor rate for our customers who bought from us is eighty dollars an hour versus a hundred dollars an hour for somebody else we do free pickups and free deliveries for our service customers you bought a scooter from us you you run over a nail get a flat tire then we're going to come up and pick that scooter up. We're going to come out and pick that scooter up for free. If your scooter's in for a warranty issue, if your scooter's in for a warranty issue, then we will, you know, give you a rental scooter to use in the meantime as an additional value. So that extra value comes, come, you know, comes at at a price, but it's a. Uh, it's definitely been a, a differentiator. Like we want to give as much value in the price, and that's that's the key, whether it's in retail or in whatever you know, real estate, you have to find ways to give as much value as you possibly can. So and I'm happy to like... No, no, I, I understand. And it's, it's bottom line is the service, good, good yeah. service. Oh, for sure. Because your brand... With you, what you say there online, you know, they want their scooter fixed now and for the best price, you know, and sometimes it's... All the analysis may lead to paralysis, you know, it just services the bottom line. Right. Well, and your brand is going to be defined by the service that you offer, by the service that I offer, um, by the, pro you know, by what we're selling and how we do it, you know, and our engagement, like everything, all of it's going to come together to create our brand. And so that's so critically important. Your reputation, you know, is built on that. It's built on that service. Um, so we are at quarter after things, but this is great, great stuff. So five more minutes. Okay. The questions we got is that okay? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Yes. Logos. Did you stress over your logo? Did you talk to me about logos? Um. Do we need logos? <laughs> <laughs> Do this is my logo, and it's it's my. You know what that is? It's literally my, it's literally my initials. Like I just like went like this. But your your logo too is kind of the NSL. NS4L. Logo. Like, you know, but even even names, business names, logos, like the that gets built by the service and by the reputation, right? By what you're building. Like, what was the Pepsi logo, you know? Like, what was, like, any organization? What's the Apple logo? What's, like, it's just, it was a logo, but the brand and the business that got built over time is what really made those logos so valuable. So, so do I stress about them in the early days? No, because they can also evolve. You can change a logo at any time. Like, who says you can't? Is, it, is that something, as a realtor, that we need to think about or I would be more concerned about the contents that I'm putting out and how often I'm putting it out um, and and not necessarily like the the quality of content because I think that's completely subjective but uh, but really just focusing on you know asking yourself what is it that my audience wants to see and hear and how can I provide them value? And maybe that is a how to install this curtain rod in your brand new house. Maybe it is, you know, how to, you know, get your children established to a brand new community after 
or a stressful move. Maybe, you know, like there's so many different ways to do it. You just have to ask yourself what's best for you and what really uh, is a representation of you as a realtor. And um, and that's a great place to start. If, if I said the cat realtor here, we all know who that is, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. we do. So that's the kind of thing that we want other people to, to yeah. We, you know, Am I asking this right? Well, yeah, but she's been doing it for 40 Don't years. Don't vote. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be, like, getting consumed over whether or not I have the perfect logo. Okay. At all. It would be, like, one of the lowest priority things in my personal opinion. Yeah. Do you have a good tool for, like, auto-captioning video content if we don't have yeah. the capability to sit there? Yeah. I, I don't. We don't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, unless they're making like one of those little pieces of video, like I think Josh, you physically have to like put those captions in, right? Um, but for Facebook and for LinkedIn and YouTube, we use Rev, Rev.com. And if you send me an email, Colin at RepaintTheWall.com, which is our digital media company, um, I'll give you my business cards. I'll leave them up here, and you guys can grab them. Um, if you send me an email, I can send you like a code that will give you like ten dollars of free. It, it's basically a dollar a minute. So if it's a ten minute video, then it costs ten dollars. And what what they'll do is you can like connect it to your YouTube. At least this is what we do. We connect it to our YouTube, and when we upload a video to YouTube, we send it to Rev. They'll caption it. And they'll actually drop the file right in, so that way it's already there. And then we can export the file and use it on LinkedIn, Facebook. You get to rate the captioner. I mean, I've had some that don't know how to spell Gainesville, and you have to go back in and like fix it. But, <laughs> but you know, most of them, most of the ones that are, I would say it's pretty good overall, and that they're going to do a simple Google search. I've even had some like even with the podcast, <laughs> where we like got into like some technical like terms and names where they. I gave them an A plus. I'm like, how did like they literally Googled <laughs> these scientific words and like uh, crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, just send me an email and I can send you that discount code. But that's the way to do it. And guys, um, like this is my favorite part is the Q and A part. I wish we could do this longer. But feel free to email me any questions that you guys have, and I want to make sure that we get them answered. Um, absolutely. You know, want to help you guys. I know, like I said, like considering that vision, you know, are you introducing somebody to our community for the first time? That's so critical for me, and this, that's why I wanted to come here and do this. Um, so the more successful that each of you are, the more successful I know this community is going to be. So I thank you <laughs> from the bottom of my heart for all the time and effort that you put into making this area so great. So thanks for having me this morning. Thank you. Thank you.